Hey everyone, today we're going to show you how to bleed or change the brake fluid on your F2X, F3X, and F8X BMWs. For this particular car here, we're going to be putting in Castrol SRF um, because uh, this car does see some track time. And I, I really like SRF for the track because it has a very high wet boiling point, which means this fluid will perform the same over a longer period of time. And at least in my own experience, this lasts about mm, 10, 10 months before you start to see any drop off in performance. Um, so almost a whole year. So we're going to go ahead and put this guy in here. So for the brake fluid change, you only really need one liter of fluid. And in actuality, you'll have some left over. Um, if you remove about eight ounces through the uh, passenger rear, six ounces through the passenger, uh, or sorry, through the driver's rear, and then four or five ounces uh, out of each of the front sides, um, that will be enough to change out your uh, entire uh, brake fluid system. Now when I change uh, brake fluid, there's just a couple other tools I like to use. Um, the first is a, a catch bottle. Um, so this end of this tube just goes right over the bleed nipple uh, and then it just goes into this catch can receptacle. This can also be easily made with just like an old soda bottle and some clear tubing. Um, but uh, more importantly, I like to use a pressure bleeder. Um, so what this does is this has a cap adapter that goes onto the reservoir, the brake fluid reservoir, um, and then you can pump this unit to pressurize it. So since the brake fluid in the reservoir is pressurized, it pushes it through the system and out through the bleed nipple. This makes bleeding a one-person job uh, very easy. You don't need a second person to you know, press down on the brake pedal from inside the uh, cockpit. This particular bleeder is uh, made by Schwaben or ECS Tuning. And the reason why I like this one over uh, the uh, Motive one is the attachments at the end are quick uh, releasable and quick detachable. And this becomes really handy because I don't like to put fluid in here because then you have to clean it out. So um, this will make it very easy to swap attachments. And also if I need to refill the reservoir in between, I can release the pressure here, take this cap off, very easily after disconnecting from here instead of having to turn the cap and have all this tubing turn and flop around with it. So looking in our engine bay, we first need to expose the master cylinder reservoir. And to do that, we need to turn the 10 millimeter uh, cams uh, 90 degrees. With the cams disengaged, we can now remove the side panel cover, which exposes the master cylinder reservoir right here. Next, we'll unscrew the cap, exposing all of the brake fluid inside. If you want to see what your brake fluid reservoir level is, you can see there's a maximum and a minimum indicator on the side. And I know it's a little bit hard to see the fluid, so sometimes I just take a flashlight to illuminate it, and then you can see how much fluid you actually have. All that amber, golden brown color, that's the fluid. So I'm going to put my pressure bleeder cap onto the reservoir. And since this is plastic on plastic, I want to get it snug, but I don't really want to get it like super tight because then the, the threads could end up slipping. So I've got that on there. And now what I will do is I will take the quick release to the pressure bleeder and attach it at the top. And then make sure the valve is open. And then I can start pressurizing my pressure bleeder. And uh, looking at this uh, pressure gauge here on the bleeder itself, um, I'm only going to pressurize it to between 15 and 20 PSI. So looking at this front caliper here, you can see the bleed nipple on the outside. And actually, the front calipers have an inner one as well. But uh, on all four corners of the car, the bleed nipples are covered with this little uh, rubber cap. So you'll want to, you'll need to pop that off first. And then after that, you'll see that there's a hex base. This is 11 millimeters. Um, you can also use a 7 16 uh, wrench on that as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to be putting our catch can bottle uh, tube over the uh, bleed nipple. And then we're going to open it only about maybe a quarter to a half turn um, with the wrench. And that'll allow the fluid to flow through. So here we are on the passenger rear side and I've got the bleed bottle or the bleed can hooked up along with my wrench on the bleed nipple. And I'm just going to go ahead and open this a quarter turn in order to start the bleed. 
Now that we've gotten our 8 ounces or roughly 250 milliliters um, out of the reservoir, um, plus the reservoir contents, we can go ahead and close up this side and move on to the driver's rear side. So now my reservoir is uh, almost empty. You can see very little yellow just at the bottom. And I don't want to let it get below that minimum level while I'm bleeding. So since I have to refill it, what I'm going to need to do is I am going to have to shut off this valve on the uh, bleeder so I can disconnect this from it, unscrew the cap from the reservoir, and now I can add the new brake fluid to the reservoir. If you want to be able to pour the fluid into the reservoir more quickly, you can remove this screen. Uh, sometimes you can, these can be a little difficult, um, so you may need something like a pick to help you uh, pry it out. After we're all topped off again, we can go ahead and put our cap back on and then put the pressure bleeder back on it to continue bleeding. Next we'll get the six ounces we need to get out of the driver's rear side. The third corner we're going to bleed is the passenger side front and if you look at the caliper you'll notice that there are two uh, bleed screws, one on the inside and one on the outside. Um, we're going to start with the one on the inside and then finish with the outside. And we'll finish up our bleeding on the front driver's side. Now that we're done bleeding our brakes, we can go ahead and remove our bleed adapter um, for the pressure bleeder. And we'll, we'll oh, don't forget your screen like I almost just did. <laughs> so make sure your screen goes back in there. And then you can go ahead and close it with the cap. Then we can go ahead and put our cover back on. Get it seated. And then we can turn the 10 millimeter cams back to lock it. And lastly, what do we do with our old brake fluid? Well, I tend to put it in some old soda bottles, and then when those get full, I take them down to my county uh, refuse center. Um, this falls under household hazardous waste, and they accept it there for me for free. Um, but you can also check to see if your local auto parts store, store will take it. Please don't dispose of it in an irresponsible manner. It's really not good for the environment.